if you are data rich and understanding poor, that's the time you use machine learning. But the converse was also true, that if you were understanding rich and data poor, machine learning wasn't the way to go. Hi, and welcome to our podcast. Uh, this is a new uh, departure for us. We're testing out whether we can dis talk about things that we have talked about for, in some cases, up to 30 years uh, working together, but do it on video uh, as a podcast, because uh, it may be interesting how we discuss and argue things uh, uh, and we kind of know our views, but then we don't know our views on various topics. We really want to start this one with an explainer. And uh, I was going to ask uh, John to kick this off. Um, how do AI, machine learning, and LLMs relate? Are they the same? Are they different? What should we be thinking differently? Often these words are used interchangeably, but uh, I don't think they ought to be. Okay. Well, it's a good topic. So let me start with, uh, um, hopefully I can just pick one off straight away, but perhaps you'll disagree. Um, AI, I consider somewhat meaningless. It's a great marketing term and it's being attached to every product in sight at the moment. Um, it's usually defined as computers doing things that, uh, uh, or machines doing things that humans uh, are needed for their intellect to be able to achieve and now can be done on a computer. And so oh, it hits in the name, right? Artificial intelligence. Yes. Yeah. But, you know, what we mean by AI now and yesterday, it's constantly changing. So when mechanical adding machines came up, I'm sure if the term existed then, it would have perfectly applied that the idea that, you know, you suddenly uh, something that like adding that only humans can do can be done by a machine. So it's an artificial intelligence. So it's a constantly shifting goalpost where it's all used just to mean the latest stuff, because we've been doing AI for at least since the 1940s. Um, what we mean by it and what we dismiss is that's not AI, that's just doing arithmetic well that changes over time and we'll continue so, but do you actually think that really because you could argue that when you really want to affix the term AI, i mean clearly it's being used in all sorts of ways right so i agree about that but you could argue it's to do with being quintessentially human and when you feel like somebody you know almost obviously there's the turing test and other similar kinds of tests of whether you can tell something's a machine or a human isn't it isn't it that that it's hitting at? Now, it may fail or succeed, and people may have fixed it in the wrong cases, but isn't isn't that the fundamental difference between things that have little bits of intelligence as opposed to things that sort of d demonstrate that they have a, a, apparently a human breadth? Yeah, but if you look at it from my viewpoint, then what is quintessentially human changes over time, because we take it for granted now that computers can count better than we can when it was first happening or when computers could first play chess or could first play Go. Yeah. You know, these things seem like essentially human things that suddenly this amazing magic machine can no, but it's, my, my, I agree about The only dismiss it now is not quintessentially human because we're so used to it. Yeah, but, but is there in fact a qualitative point in the, you know, line in the sand where you say, when you interact with this machine, it does seem like a human. And for all the interactions, not just for one very specific task, like playing chess. And you're right, the people have often been amazed. I mean, I'm sure this was true for previous industrial revolutions altogether, not just for ones involving the mind, but also uh, brawn as well as brain, so to speak. Um, but I don't know, does, doesn't this feel qualitatively different when you get to the point? I mean, and we've seen that this year a bit with, and um, perhaps we'll come on to this, LLMs. Uh, things like chat GPT, where you send it something and many people, at least at the outset, may not be clear whether they've got a human coming back or a computer coming back. It seems extremely unobvious well, for I a think very that wide rather, range. That rather depends on how you set the experiments up, because if you can see it, then you can tell that the LLM isn't human because you're looking at a screen, not a, you know, a flesh and blood person you can reach out and touch. Um, if you go back to my kind of counter example, when uh, computers were first doing arithmetic, if you were sent an answer through the post that came out of the ENIAC machine, you couldn't tell whether that number was added up by humans or not. It's, and at the time that you were amazed, you might think, well, it's four digits. That absolutely must be a human it added two four digit numbers together. Because what machine could do something that complicated? So I think if you, you know, it's constantly evolving the closer to being able to pass for a kind of uh, human interface, like real-time conversation now. Yeah, I think is. the interface perhaps is more the significant piece as to whether it seems, whether you can interact with it directly. Well, that's just part of the interface. 
you know, in, in the 19th century, we didn't interact with humans a lot of the time face to face because you sent mail and it would take two days to get an answer. And and so a machine that could answer in, you know, in a day would be must be a human if it could write a letter. <laughs> so, you know, we're, you know, if we get into the world where you start having kind of, um, you know, robotics and uh, and so synthetic humans so we actually really can't tell there's no interface barrier anymore then you could claim maybe that really is cross, crossing some threshold but then you're in blade runner territory rather than rather than where we are now so the whole act of chatting through the through a chat interface is a way of hiding putting the curtain up between you and the ai so you can't tell but if you could see if you could see the lights flashing on and off you'd know so i think that's okay, just so, uh, so you're saying that 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 mode of of interaction is in a sense disguising the fact that it doesn't look like a human etc cetera, etc cetera. um let, let let's go back to our original explainer which i diverted off somewhat uh diverted you off somewhat um so you were saying ai was easy to peel off as as one of these things between ai machine learning llms etc that's, that's yes yeah, so it's lack it of real technical definition and and abuse in the in the marketplace is makes that slightly different in my mind um we're getting somewhere slightly more technical when you start thinking about um, machine learning versus LLMs or generative AI more generally. Um, and actually to explain, I'd like to go back a step and talk about modeling first, because I think there's this interesting historical uh, arc that, that this all fits into that when we first had, well, even before computers, but when we had met, maths on pencil and paper, and then that became moved into an automated way in computing, you know, we have models for the world. We had models for how the sun orbits the earth and when the moon will next be a full moon and things like that. We built intellectual models and we did that through thinking about them. We as humans decided what the rules of behavior were, whether they were equations or differential equations or some other way of, of, of writing a formula or a process for calculating something. And what computers did was to raise the automation of that. So now we didn't actually have to Get the pencil and paper out and do that ourselves something the machine could do that automatically but the rules came from humans we said that the differential equation for projectile motion is this the computer works out the consequences but um but it's human-led ideas so then um as the models get more complicated and as data proliferated a new paradigm emerged and that's where we get into the machine learning world which is what if we could take a problem like projectile motion or maybe something we don't understand the rules for but we got lots of data for can the computer figure out the rules so for the first time the humans were setting a kind of framework for thinking but not the rules and the computer was working out the rules for behavior so you, would, you could take some problem like can you recognize whether this is a picture of a cat or a dog and you could build the rules without having to understand them yourself you know as a human i might try and write down cats have pointier ears but actually that kind of failed as an approach because the rules are in the real world no, fuzzy things are just too complicated have pointy ears as well but i never remember <laughs> well, that's true i'm no, not a sufficiently dog person well but you illustrate the point which is that we as humans can't even write down the rules ourselves we know it when we see it but we've when you actually try and write down the rules for computer vision that kind of failed because they're so hard to write general sets of rules and having the computer crunch data allowed it to come up with the rules to solve the specific problem now um so in a way, that's using the computer to go one level higher from doing executing the rules to making the rules. Kind of move up a um, low, low layer of automation in a sense. So the way I see um, generative AI and LLMs, are, are, you know, for now at least the lead example, although I think the multimodal models are going to sweep them aside fairly quickly. There, the paradigm is slightly higher level for the computer again, which is rather than give, looking at a problem and trying to have the computer figure out the rules for it, we have the computer look at the world and try and figure out rules for the world, regardless of the problem. And then having built that rule set, we can say, ah, and the particular thing I'm interested in is what's in this picture or you know, what's the answer to this question. But the model is more general. And so that's why a lot of people think that it's uh, it's a big leap toward general, general um, AI. Um, but but in one point, you're implicitly making specific. that, just, just to be clear. AI does not equal LLMs. So... A lot of people are using these terms interchangeably. In my view, AI and you know, however we define it, is an aim. We're trying to somehow have an artificially intelligent machine, a machine that apparently exhibits intelligence, however you think that is. LLMs are a process by which you may get to that, which seems to have produced a lot of results. Uh, uh, which have become very apparent this year, but but they're by no means the only mechanism by which you might get artificial intelligence. 
So yes. that's the fundamental and, difference in in the use of these terms, I think. And of course, behind the scenes, LLMs are machine learned models, but they've just uh, reached a level of generality and scale that they. Feel right, so, so that you're defining something different. further, which is that machine learning behind LLMs is kind of the basic. Uh, what what you're saying is that machine learning is kind of a a basic underlying way to do things that has enabled specifically LLMs to be helpful for generating artificial intelligence yeah. style of results. So if you look at it on a more technical level, an LLM is is really not doing anything remotely like artificial intelligence as we might conceive it as humans. Although, you know, we could we could speculate about whether we're as intelligent as we think we are and whether we're actually just fun running a bunch of rules. But what they're, they're doing is a very simple task. The LLM's uh, been given this general thing of understanding language and what words come next. It's doing no more, no less. That so given a sequence of words, what are the words that are likely to come next? But the, the, the breakthrough has been that they are so good at that, that the words that come next that we could achieve five, 10 years ago were things like, well, it's about time for a noun or a, or a verb in the sentence. And we've had eight words, it's time for a full stop. So they had very short range understanding of language, the very likely next word that uh, that came. You know, if you just had a verb, then maybe an adjective would uh, would be a likely word to come next. And what we now have a model for is how the words at the beginning of a story relate to words at the end of a story, or how the words long in range, answer relate to a question, or how um, the sequence of actions that one might write down follow a set of instructions. And that sort of combination of short and long range, the short range gives you the very human like it's a proper sentence, but the long range gives things that start appearing to have um, a kind of narrative arc or an understanding of question and answer or instruction behavior uh, properties. That's where this kind of emergent behavior starts happening. But in the end, they're doing exactly the same model as we've been doing in machine learning uh, for the last 10 or 20 years. And, and the other they thing is we reached a level we, higher. We oughtn't to forget, in my view, and by the way, we should wrap this soon, um, but we oughtn't to forget uh, there will be a place for deliberate algorithmic modeling, if you want to call it that. Right. Just because we, uh, there's a new kid on the block. Yeah. Um, and machine learning isn't that new, but certainly this use of machine learning, et cetera, is with LLMs, doesn't mean we should completely jettison everything where we deliberately set up a model. And I yeah. think actually it'll be the hybrid of these two that's delivering many aspects of truly artificial intelligence, so to speak, as we move forward. And we don't know quite where they are. And by the way, there's a sort of parallel, which is that when computers, before computers came in at all, mathematics was all a lot about symbolically representing things algebraically, because that was the way you could minimize calculating. Then computers came in and meant that you could calculate stuff very quickly. That was cheap, relatively, and got much, much cheaper. So then people often forgot about any symbolic calculation, just did numerics. Everything was numerical. You know, uh, Building my plane wing profile is, is numerical rather than symbolic because it seemed to work much better. I think we're now in an era where you can do much, much better by doing some symbolic work, some numerics work, because the computer can do both. And I think it's the same will be the case with um, traditional, uh, I don't know really want to say traditional, but deliberate modeling versus sort of machine learning style. Yeah. Well, it's the right, right tool for the job. And I, I've had a line I've been using for years, which I now I'm trying to uh, update for the new LLM world, because for a long time, I would explain to people when I talked about projects that we would do with customers, that uh, if you are data rich and understanding poor, that's the time you use machine learning. But the converse was also true, that if you were understanding rich and data poor, machine learning wasn't the way to go. Classical modeling, the kind of old fashioned AI as, uh, as we've been doing since the 1980s was the way to go. So if you know the physics of a situation, use equations or you know whatever the, yeah. the, the modeling is, if you have lots of data, but you've no idea how what the rules are, then machine learning is the way to go. And now I think we've got this third paradigm, which is a little bit harder to put into words, but I think it's if you can say what you want, or you kind of know it when you see it, then generative AI is quite a good solution. So, you know, if there are things where you could say, well, here's four examples of the kind of thing I want it to do, but I don't really know what I mean, but I know it when I see it, that LM is very good at being driven by examples, or if you can describe it in the way that if you would sit down a 18 year old, uh, perfectly sensible, but completely inexperienced worker at a desk and say, okay, I've got three minutes to explain your job to you. If they could get a three minute instruction, then LMs could probably 
have a stab at that as well. So we've now got these kind of three competing paradigms, but the start point is, you know, what's my understanding of the problem and and what am I trying to achieve? Not leaping to LLMs are the solution to everything because they're not. Well, very good. I hope that's been helpful. Uh, our aim to sort of uh, give you an idea of the difference between AI, machine learning, LLMs, uh, and um, hope to see you back soon on a different topic uh, that uh, we find ourselves discussing. See you next time, everyone.